<sighs> All right, hello ladies, gentlemen, and other. Um, so here I've got this awesome Juniper SRX240 that was uh, sent to me by uh, Austin Ayers there. I, I wanted some Juniper gear because, you know, in this ever-changing world in which we live in, I would like to make sure that uh, I know how to work with literally any piece of networking equipment that there is. Um, and so that includes Sienna Brocade, uh, Nokia, um, Ericsson, uh, ZTE, Huawei, uh, Juniper, Cisco. I already know Cisco. Cisco sucks. Um, so, you know, like all that. So I have to be able to work with all of this different equipment. So um, that's the other thing about consultants. That's one of the reasons why consultants do cost more. I know that I am actually cheaper than most consultants. I do that on purpose. I don't typically work with big companies. Uh, and if a company grows to be big while I'm with them, sure, I'll remain their consultant. But typically what I'll do is I work with small companies that can't afford a consultant. Um, that's why my rates are so low. So, by the way, that <clears throat> that little spiel was going out to all the consulting firms out there that tried to destroy me because they said that it was creating a race to the bottom in the industry. And it's like, no, dude, there was a lot of clients I did not take on because... I didn't want big clients like that. I have a very niche clientele, and that's the small companies I like to work with, okay? So anyway, here is this Juniper. Thank you, Austin. You are wonderful. And um, one of the things which I wanted to do today, actually, I've just popped it apart to kind of do a teardown. And no, I'm not going to take these heat sinks off because they're epoxied on. That really, well, that's a great thing, but for the purposes of this video, kind of sucks. And we have a stick of RAM here. It's just standard... Uh, ECC memory. It's uh, one gig of PC25300. I'm tempted to pull it and um, uh, make it something bigger because that'd be kind of handy. But on that note, I have in the past um, come across network equipment where this is actually the hard drive. And if you pop this off, you will actually lose the OS that's on it. I don't want to have to deal with that BS. <sighs> oh God, I got a cold. All right. So anyway, now that you've seen that, one of the things which I wanted to point out was, oh, look, this is such a common sight, black and red. So let me just grab a power cord. I'm going to get a power cord. Da, 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 da. Ah, here's one. Come here, Mr. Power Cord. Or would power cords, cords be hermaphrodites because they're male and female? I don't know. That's, that's something to ponder if you're high on drugs at some point and having a very philosophical evening. Um, so let's check something out here. I'm just going to take a, my negative probe here and my positive probe here and plug them in. And let's see how many volts this runs on. Oh, would you look at that? It's 12. 12 bloody volts. And very, very simple. There's just your positive and negative bus. Sounds like this device needs some Noctua fans to be really quiet. All oh, this fan right here seems to be a little obnoxious. <laughs> Why can't I unplug the bloody thing? Okay, so anyway, <clears throat> I digress. Let's unplug this thing now. I have no intentions of logging into this thing today. I just wanted to make a short video showing you guys of the contents of the chassis. Um, so not very much to it, right? That's all. We've got our... These are actually PCMCIA buses, but they're used for the... I'm not sure what um, Juniper calls them. The, uh, in the Cisco world, these are called Wix, right? Um... Or at least that's what I was told during my CCNA course. Um, a lot of the courses I now just go on Udemy or learn from uh, uh, individuals in the industry who are willing to work with me and teach me aspects that I need. So, yeah, anyway, that's basically all there is to it. This is the inside of a Juniper SRX 420. Um, got our four modules, 12 volt DC power supply uh, for the board, which means it's easy to convert. But on that note, I'd like to mention that Usually, if something is AC like this, stock is probably not designed to be in the field. Things that are specifically designed to be out in the field are usually hardened for high and low temperatures, humidity, um, you know, dry. So, like, uh, uh, what would you say? For, what, what's the word for that? I'm getting dumber over the years. Desiccancy? I don't know. Um, and uh, 
usually, yeah, they have DC. So if it doesn't have DC, that's a pretty good indicator. It's not meant to be in an outdoor cabinet, um, typically. Uh, usually the cheaper stuff, of course, could be AC that's designed to be an outdoor cabinet. Or sometimes you'll see telecom grade stuff like uh, I've got some uh, Nokia PoE injector sitting here that's... Uh, um, actually, no, sorry, I'm wrong. That is AC and DC. Because I'm fat! No, I don't want to get demonetized. Quote ACDC. <clears throat> so anyway, that's all there is to it. I mean, if you really wanted to, you can get your hands on one of these guys cheap. Look at how ridiculously simple it is to convert it to DC. You simply pop this power supply out. Uh, you put in a... You put in one of these guys. That goes from 48 volts to um, 20... Or sorry, it goes down to 12 volts. And then this thing will be adapted. Uh, I mean, hell, if you want it for a lab, too, you could put a DC barrel connector on. I mean, it doesn't draw that much power. Uh, and in fact, let me just try something. V-set 12 volts on the nose, and let's give it um, three amps. And let's plug this thing in, into my power supply. Plug this thing into my power supply and see what we get for um, current draw. God, that's tight. That's, that's a good thing. It's supposed to be that tight. Let's see what we get for current draw. Uh, with no load, no duty. Duty, duty, duty. There we go. Turn it on. Make sure I've got the positive and negative in the right place. Yep. It does not like that. I think it wants more current. There we go. So I am drawing... Uh, 3.4 amps, 41 watts, just to boot it up. Wow. So this thing's capable of probably drawing quite a bit of power. It's probably going to be on the nameplate. That's pretty good to know, though. Let's see what the nameplate says on it. Um... One twenty volts, uh, two point five amps. So um, one twenty times two, so that's two forty. So say about uh, and then point five. So let's say about three hundred watts tops is what this thing's gonna consume. Um, so you have to be prepared for that. So yes, one of these guys would cut it. You would need at least a three hundred watt, um, forty eight volt to twelve volt buck converter. So yep, that's all that there is to it. Um, pretty cool, eh? Huh? 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 There we go. I'm going to put the cover back on this thing because uh, it's going into my lab and I really, really need it to work so that I can practice and learn with it. Because um, like I said, I've got to be constantly retraining. By the way, oh, AdTran is wonderful. For any of you guys that are looking to get into fiber, um, I would take AdTran over any of the... Uh, other companies out there, especially the ones that start with a C. Um, I have not been impressed with the um, uh, fiber equipment that starts with a C. Uh, CA, I should say, but um, Adtran has proven to be like literally the de facto standard. In fact, here in Kanakistan, um, the majority of fiber providers out there use um, Adtran, either Adtran or Nokia. Um, and of course there was Wowie, but thanks to the orange man, we don't have Wowie here anymore. And um, don't fight over that because, in my personal opinion, realistically, Huawei didn't... I mean, they still haven't been uh, proven 100% to have committed any uh, crimes. It was basically a, another Trump trade war thing with him trying to get control over a product and Calia. And uh, because they didn't want to comply, he shut them down, his punishment, and started this whole fiasco. Because, you know what, if, at the end of the day, Cisco and D-Link both have way more... Um, security holes in them, vulnerabilities than Huawei. So that just goes to show that individuals who don't know anything about telecommunications shouldn't open their mouths about it. And I'm referring to government officials. Libertarian! Peace, folks. We'll catch you. Bye. Ba-ba-ba-ba!